sky was a tornado. When I saw it, I just knew I had to run from it. Our pastor come running through the building, yelling, get the kids to the basement. I remember hearing like a roaring noise. I remember things come flying in at us. The car was just swaying and moving around and being hit by stones and debris. Janie was calling mommy, mommy, and then all at once, uh, I couldn't hear her no more. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantore. In April 1974, the Midwest and parts of the South experienced one of the worst tornado outbreaks in American history. A total of 147 twisters touched down in 13 states. The tornadoes killed hundreds and left thousands of others injured. Among the hardest hit towns was Xenia, Ohio, a rural community located 20 miles east of Dayton. There, one of the strongest twisters ever recorded touched down. It stretched a half mile wide and registered F5 on the Fujita scale, the ranking reserved for the most destructive twisters. By the time it was all over, the town of Xenia had nearly been wiped off the map. Wednesday, April 3rd, 1974. A late morning storm blows in quickly over Xenia. It chases away warm and sunny weather, dropping temperatures briefly into the 50s. Just south of downtown, 23-year-old Vicki Fudge is nearing the end of her shift at the drugstore where she works as a stock clerk. She is anxious to go and pick up her two young sons, Eric and Sean. I had taken my boys, who were 23 months and four years old, to my sister-in-law's house. She babysat for my boys. As she finishes work, Vicki is unaware of the danger brewing in the sky. Strong cold jet stream winds are creating a low pressure region east of the Rockies. As this air mass moves eastward, it collides with warm, moist surface air coming up from the south. The unstable conditions face off, creating instantaneous tornadoes all the way from Illinois to Alabama and east to the Appalachians. 4.30 p.m., five miles southwest of Xenia. Two funnels drop from the sky. They collide, becoming a single massive tornado that stretches up to a half mile wide. And it is heading straight for Xenia and its 25,000 residents. At the drugstore, Vicki hears there's been a tornado warning. She assumes it's just a false alarm. We received a phone call that there was a tornado headed towards Xenia. I had never seen a tornado before. I had never experienced one, so, you know, I was in disbelief. Shortly after 4.30, Vicki leaves work and begins the four-mile drive to get her boys. Almost instantly, she spots the giant twister in the distance. Vicki knows that if she keeps driving in that direction, she will be heading right into the vortex. It was coming towards Xenia, and it was long, black, and I just knew I had to run from it. But yet, my heart wanted to get to my boys. Vicky has no choice but to turn the car around. She races off in the opposite direction, toward the Nazarene Kitty College, a daycare center in kindergarten where her mother works as a bookkeeper. Located just west of downtown, the school has about 200 students. Many have already been picked up for the day, but about 100 still remain in the building. Co-director Garnet Beam and other teachers hear a startling radio report that a twister is fast approaching Xenia. One of our uh, associates came up to me and he asked, Garnet, what do you uh, have for a procedure about a tornado? And he said, well, you better instruct the teachers. In fact, the school has no formal tornado plan, so the 37-year-old is forced to improvise. I started getting the kids uh, to the basement hallway. 
put their hands over their head to protect their heads. Moments later, Vicki Fudge screeches into the school's parking lot and runs inside the building. I was scared. I went down into the basement and the children and the teachers were lined up sitting on the floor and I found my mother and sat down and I was scared. Among the children is Garnet Beam's five-year-old son, Scott. Beam is torn between her responsibility to the students and her instincts as a mother. He was sitting across from me, and uh, as a mother, I had a desire to cover him, but then I said, no, I have this little girl laying on my lap that's afraid, and Scott wasn't afraid. As Vicki looks at the frightened children, she can't help but worry about her own two sons who she prays are safe at her brother's house. Two miles southwest of the school, Vicky's brother Bill Drake is on his way home from his job at the city's water treatment plant. Suddenly, he sees the huge twister looming a few miles away. The whole sky looked like a tornado. I'd never seen anything like that. I was just surprised it was that big. I knew I better get home quicker, because at that point, it really scared me. When he gets to his house, Drake hustles his wife, his three children, and his sister's two boys out the door. Just started yelling, get in the car. And I wanted to get out of the house, because I was headed right toward my house. With everyone inside the station wagon, Drake races back toward the water treatment plant. He hopes they can take shelter in the plant's concrete basement, which is 30 feet below ground. Along the way, Drake struggles to control the car in the face of increasingly fierce winds. The car was sliding and bouncing, and the height of the wind was actually just pushing me down the street. They make it to the plant, just blocks ahead of the monstrous tornado. The twister dodges the plant, but continues jogging northeast, right for the Nazarene Kitty College. Inside the preschool's basement, co-director Garnett Bean hears the sound of debris hitting the building. She tries to prepare the four- and five-year-olds for what could happen next. I said, now, the lights will, may go out. I told them, I said, now, the Lord's going to be with us. And I know more and made that statement. And the lights went out. The tornado hit. The twister slams directly into the school and peels back the roof. Teachers try to calm the screaming children as their building disintegrates one floor above. He heard breaking of glass. We could hear the tumbling of the uh, cement blocks. We could hear the wind picking up. We could hear the tornado coming over top of us. And then the light fixture fell down from the ceiling. And then, just as quickly as it started, everything comes to an abrupt stop. The ravaging tornado has moved on. Vicky and the others emerge from the basement to see what's left of the building. We opened the doors to go upstairs, and when I opened the doors, there was nothing but sky. And it, it was just disbelief. We saw the sky, that the whole roof, and, and so much of it was gone. And the nightmare is not over. Just before 5 p.m., the F-5 Twister heads straight for downtown Xenia. 22-year-old Anna Matthews and her two daughters, 5-year-old Janie and 6-month-old Melissa, are at a popular downtown hangout, the A&W Drive-In. As Anna places their orders, she has no idea that a tornado is barreling straight toward them. I don't even think we got the food yet. And uh, the wind kind of picked up a little bit heavier. And guy got cloudy. Suddenly, an employee runs into the parking lot and screams a warning that a twister is coming. I just remember them coming out, running out, and telling everybody to come in and take cover. There was a tornado, and I didn't know what a tornado was. I never heard of a tornado. Though the drive-in's flimsy walls will provide little protection, it's the safest place for patrons to hide. Anna and her two kids seek shelter under a table next to an employee named Dorothy Rolland. 
Rollin moves closer to help shield five-year-old Janie. She was covering up Janie, and then all at once, it just, it hit. The building collapsed on all of us. I felt helpless and scared, and nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do. Felt like the world was coming to an end, really. p.m. April 3, 1974. Scores of tornadoes are wreaking havoc in 13 states in the Midwest and parts of the South. A giant F5 twister has already decimated hundreds of homes and businesses in Xenia, Ohio. Now it's tearing through downtown with wind speeds estimated at up to 300 miles an hour. At the A&W drive-in, 22-year-old Anna Matthews and her daughters Five-year-old Janie and six-month-old Melissa huddle under a table as the twister rips the building to pieces. I could feel the bricks, the building collapse, and uh, felt cold water running, like, on the floor. It was just really, like, a roaring noise. I remember hearing that, and then I remember seeing things come flying in at us. I thought the world was coming to an end. You know, I was scared to death. I was really scared. Dorothy Rollin, an A&W waitress, is trying to protect Janie from flying debris. I vaguely remember you know, whispering, telling me it's going to be okay. And I have it like in the back of my head, but she kept telling me it's going to be okay. In spite of the comforting words, the child screams for her mother. Janie was calling, calling mommy, mommy, and then all at once, uh, I couldn't hear her no more. The roaring winds drown out her cries for help. Debris sails through the building as the walls come apart. Then suddenly everything becomes quiet. The tornado has moved on. It didn't seem like it lasts long at all. It happened so fast. After being on the ground for 39 minutes, the powerful twister finally dissipates. The tornado leaves behind tremendous damage. The A&W drive-in has been reduced to a pile of rubble. Anna Matthews and her two daughters have survived, but they can't move beneath the mass of debris. I thought we was going to die. Just didn't think, you know, we was going to get out of there. Just then, the mother hears voices a few yards away. Rescue workers have arrived and are digging for survivors. You know, hear people talking and pouring stuff off of us. It seemed like they were just throwing bricks, blocks off of us. After 45 minutes, Anna and her six-month-old daughter, Melissa, are freed from the rubble. But when five-year-old Janie is uncovered, the child is unconscious. When they brought Janie out, she was out. And somebody was hot. Is there a nurse? Is there a nurse close by? One of the rescuers performs CPR on Janie. Seconds later, she regains consciousness. Soon after, however, volunteers uncover the body of Dorothy Rolland, the drive-in waitress who shielded Janie. She is dead, suffocated by debris. I felt hurt, very hurt. I mean, you know, she saved my daughter. A mile west of the A&W, teachers and students at Nazarene Kitty College are gathered outside their shattered preschool. Everyone has survived, including all 100 children. The building is badly damaged, but still standing. Until parents can get there to find their children, co-director Garnet Beam watches over the students, including her five-year-old son, Scott. I think I was just so thankful that we were all still alive and that uh, we had not perished in, in the tornado. Vicki Fudge and her mother, a school employee, were also among those who had taken shelter in the school's basement. Before the tornado struck, Vicki had been en route to pick up her two young sons at her brother Bill's house. Now she is desperate to find out what happened to Eric and Sean. I thought to myself, I have to get to a phone. There was no phone to go to. There was nothing 
Everything was, there was just total destruction. And that is when I thought, I have to walk and find my boys. Since many of the roads are impassable, Vicki and her mother make the two-mile journey to her brother's house on foot. Along the way, they see the trail of destruction the tornado has left in its wake. An hour later, they finally reach Bill's neighborhood. The devastation is worse than anything they have ever seen. There wasn't a street. The houses were completely gone. It was just nothing but just piles of rubble. It was very bad. It was something that I never want to see again. But when Vicki sees her brother's street, she is relieved to find that the twister has left many houses still standing, including her brother's. After finding no one home, Vicki speaks with a neighbor who says she saw Bill and his wife drive off with a car full of kids. I said, when? What time was it? And she said, it was probably about five minutes before the tornado hit. As it turns out, her brother and his family, as well as Vicky's two sons, have survived the tornado. They took shelter inside a concrete basement at the wastewater treatment plant, where Bill works. Now, Drake leaves his family safely at the plant and heads into town to find Vicky. She didn't know what had happened to us. The neighbors had seen us leave, and so they had no idea where we were. At the Nazarene Kitty College, Frantic parents are just arriving to find their kids. They were all crying when they would see that we were all okay. Because when they would come up on our building, they felt like we had been uh, killed because it looked demolished. But their reunions are cut short by more frightening news. We needed to all stay down in the basement because they hear that there were other tornadoes sighted and I can remember uh, dreading to think oh are we, we're going to get hit again and are we going to make it it's late afternoon on April 3rd 1974 an F5 tornado has nearly flattened Xenia Ohio Rescuers have started digging for people trapped beneath rubble. Other survivors wander the streets in a daze. And the danger isn't over yet. Around 5.30 p.m., a second tornado warning is issued. Terrified residents scramble for cover. At the Nazarene Kitty College, everyone rushes back into the basement, which has sustained only minor damage. I had a lot more fear when we were a anticipating this uh, tornado coming back, I was terrified. After attempting to find her two sons, Sean and Eric, who were with her brother during the tornado, Vicki Fudge and her mother return and join the others in the basement. My mom and I, we were there for quite a few hours, and I had no idea where my boys were. Luckily, a second tornado never touches down. At 10 p.m., an all-clear is issued. The danger is finally over. Vicky's brother Bill Drake arrives at the school with more good news. I first told Vicky that her boys were okay, everybody was okay, and they were at the plant. Vicky and my mom, they were real emotional. At 11 p.m., Vicky, 23-month-old Eric, and 4-year-old Sean are reunited. I felt so happy and just gave him lots of hugs and kisses. The next day, the scope of the disaster was revealed. 32 people were killed by the tornado. One of the victims was a w employee, Dorothy Rowland. During the twister, she used her body to shield five-year-old Janie. I consider her my hero, because, you know, if it wasn't for her, I may not have been here. All told, 2,000 homes and businesses were destroyed in Xenia. Total damage came to more than $75 million. It would take years to rebuild the town. Even now, three decades later, eyewitnesses still talk about the twister that transformed their lives and their hometown. Xenia, like before the tornado, it was, it was a nice, cozy little town. 
tornado changed that. Anytime there's a tornado warning, we definitely heed the warning. Before 1974, never paid any attention to it. But now I really watch to see where it is. What made the 1974 Xenia tornado stand out from other F5s? The answer when Storm Stories returns. So what made the 1974 Xenia tornado stand out from other F5s? Although the twister that struck Xenia was classified as an F5, experts say the destruction was so devastating, it's one of the few times they were tempted to assign an F6 rating. There has never been an F6 tornado. As a rule, F5 tornadoes are rare. They account for less than one-tenth of one percent of the twisters that touch down in the United States. During the 1974 super outbreak, the Xenia tornado was one of six F5s recorded in a single day. For Storm Stories, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next. This is the worst storm in the history of the world.